If Jesus has a God above him, how can he be the most high? Well, that was the one someone asked me to answer because later, yeah. how can Jesus have a God over him? You yeah. guys want me to answer, answer that for Berto? I know Nick knows this, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, very simple. Let's see if we believe the consistency of scripture. Now, the father didn't become flesh, right? Correct. Correct. The son did. All right. Now, let's see if we believe scripture is consistent. Obviously, they must believe that or they're heretics, right? But anyway. It is what it is. So now right here. Jeremiah 32, 26, 27. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Ironically, I believe this is actually Christ, but that's another topic. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. The God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So if you're flesh, Jehovah's your God. Well, if Jesus is Jehovah, that means he's our God too. But let's put that aside. Let's explain. How can Jesus be Jehovah Most High? If Jehovah's is God, well, because we're Trinitarians, we don't think Jehovah's one person, the Father, Jehovah, and unit, the Son, and the Spirit. So if one person becomes flesh to serve the other, Jesus becomes flesh to serve the Father on earth, then by virtue of becoming flesh, why would it surprise us that he would honor the Father as his God from the moment he became flesh? Because here, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. About him was not anything made that was made. And it was life, and the life was light of men. So my question to them is, can they show someone other than Yahweh who is life? Because it says the word, and the word is life. Life comes from him. Can they show in the Old Testament someone other than the true God, most high, being life from whom life flows? And can they show from the Old Testament some other God who assisted the Most High in creating the heavens and the earth? They're the ones with the problems. But mm -hmm. this word, who was with God and was God, whom the Father appointed to make everything, because nothing was made without him, and this word who is the life from whom life comes and who enlightens every man, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So if I ask you, Berto, now the word became flesh. Why? To become human. Why? To serve the father. He now becomes a father servant. Why would it then shock you that when this one becomes flesh, not the father, and he becomes flesh to become the servant of the father, he would then honor the father as his God from that moment on, if we take seriously that the Father, who's Yahweh, is the God of all flesh. Mm. Yeah. Why would that be a problem? Should it? Should it be? Now they say, oh, but in heaven, he still has a God. Yeah, who told you he stopped being flesh? In heaven. That was that was another one of their, uh, but it was for, an, if it was for a different topic. Yeah, yeah, well, Jesus is still a glorified man with a glorified physical body of flesh. He's still a man. He's still a descendant of David and will return as a man. Here, how do I know this? Oh, okay. Thanks for asking. Watch here. Let me show you. So if he's still a man, Berto, and he won't stop being a man, will the father ever stop being his God? I would say no. You got to say no, because if you say yes, then that means he stopped being a man? I mean, according to... Yahweh being the God of all flesh, correct? Yes. Now, can if God is not one person, because that's what they're assuming, can one person who is God become flesh and honor the other person who is God as his God? Yeah. yeah. So let me prove to you that Jesus is still a man, will return as a man, because he's a glorified man with a glorified physical body. Acts 17, 30, 31. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, overlooked, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by what? A man, right? Mm -hmm. He hath ordained, right? Correct. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised them from the dead. So who's coming to judge? A man. What man? The man that he raised from the dead. That's Jesus. That means Jesus was raised as a man. He lives in heaven as a man and will come as a man. That's why we're told right now, 1 Timothy 2.5, Right now in heaven. Right now in heaven. For there is one God, not used to be. And there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 
Mm. So he's still a man in heaven, right? Correct. That means the father will still be his God. And will he return as a man to judge? According to Acts yes. 17, 30, 31? Mm -hmm. Yes. That means the father will still be his God. And because he's still a man, now notice, Revelation 22, 16. This is Revelation. Because he's still a man, who has a physical body and human nature, he still has a lineage. He still has a nationality. What do I mean? Let me bring in Revelation 5, 5 as well. Let me show you. And then I'm going to show you where you can show that Jesus is the most high. Just don't go anywhere. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am. Notice present tense, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Not I used to be, the root, and the offspring of David. How can Jesus still be the offspring of David? He goes, I am the offspring of David. While he's in heaven glorified, if he's not a man, with a human nature? Okay. Mm -hmm. But he is. Mm -hmm. Which means what? He still has a God. Still, yeah, so, Berto, you got it. Yeah, yeah. That he's still he's still a man, and, and the father doesn't the father doesn't stop being his God. Yeah, but you understand how this proves he's still a man. This is the point. I want correct, to correct. Because he states it in that current state, um, even after that, he is still the root and the offspring of David. Now, the root is what gives life to the tree, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. How can Jesus be the root that gives life to the Davidic tree when he's one of his offsprings? Because he says, I'm both the root. The tree has to have strong roots because the root was what sustains the tree and gives life to it. So he's saying, I am the root of David. I am his life, but I'm also his offspring. How can he be both? Because he's God in flesh. Mm. What gives life to the tree? The root? Mm. Which gives life to what? The root gives life to the tree. The tree gives life to the root. What, like, what sustains the tree? The root. The root. But that means Jesus is saying, I'm the root of David. I'm his life. I give him life. I'm the one who preserves him and his dynastic line. I'm the source of his life. But I'm also his offspring. See it? Yes. And even in heaven, he's still from the tribe of Judah. How can he have a tribal affiliation? Revelation 5.5. 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah. He's from the tribe of Judah. The root of David hath prevailed to open a book and to loose the seven seals thereof. In other words, Jesus is still a Jewish man. He's a man, a glorified man, a physical man. But because he's a man, he's still an Israelite. He's still a Jew. He's still a descendant of David. Mm. Mm. Now I want to give you one argument to show that Jesus is the most high. That's why we're saying, come on, 500 bucks, guys. Come put it in some place. Maybe they're here. Hold on. All right. Now... You go to Psalm 113. Okay, watch here. You ask the question. I'm going to ask you the question. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? In other words, this is a rhetorical question, right? Is there anyone like Yahweh who dwells on high? Nope. That means he's not most high, right? Because that's what it is. Correct? Because who correct. dwells on That means he is the highest one, correct? Yep. So there's no one like him who dwells on high. He's the highest one, right? Yes. Okay. But we got a problem, Houston. Hebrews 1.3. I thought I put it in one second. Houston, we got a problem. Why? Mm -hmm. Especially if I show you the Greek. The Greek is in hypsilis. Same Greek rendering. But you don't even need the Greek. Say, okay. So you agree with me, Hebrew Israelites. This shows Yahweh alone is the most high because there's no one like him who dwells on high. Yep. But then if Jesus is not the most high, you got a problem. Because now notice the language. Hebrews 1.3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding the, all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He's also sitting on high with the Father. Mm -hmm. On high. Mm -hmm. Same words in the Greek of Psalm 112. Even though Psalm 113 is Hebrew, as here, on high. But wait, I thought there's no one like the Lord our God who dwells on high. But the Son is exactly like the Father, and with the Father sits on high with Him. Hmm. But hmm. I thought it's not the most high, according to them. 
Okay. Now let me give you the icing on the cake for you. Ready? Now I'm going to show you something. This is why. Come on, Hebrews of Ice. We're going to give you 500 bucks. Nick will pay with JP's credit card. <laughs> okay. Now watch her. Let me show you something. And this is it. If there's nothing else, we'll wrap it up with this unless we have some customers. We'll see. You. Okay. But here's something you won't see unless you see it in the Aramaic because this is written in Aramaic. And I'll show you the Aramaic so you can see with your own eyes. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to give you the link. Okay. Daniel 7, 9, and 10. Okay. I beheld till the thrones, plural, right? All right. Okay, keep that in mind. We're cast down. The Ancient of Days did sit. So he sat on one of the thrones, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. So the Ancient of Days is appearing like an older man to show that he's very ancient because God is very old, no beginning. His throne, singular, you caught it? Mm -hmm. Now Daniel sees thrones. But this one, ancient days, only sits on one throne. Well, who sits on the other one? We're going to get there. It was like a fiery flame, and his wheels, as burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened out. None of those in heaven who are angelic creatures, heavenly host, are sitting. They're standing in dead, mm -hmm. standing to serve. Ancient of Days sits on one throne, but Daniel sees more than one. Why? Because later on, he sees another figure. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Okay. I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. Now notice, the Son of Man is not the Ancient of Days. He comes to him, right? Mm -hmm. You got that, Berto? Yeah. So the other throne is for him. How do I know? He comes to him. They brought him, the Son of Man, near before him. They brought the Son of Man before the ancient days. There was given him dominion and a glory and a kingdom. Well, if you have a kingdom, you have a throne. That's why he saw thrones. Mm. All people, nation languages, every person, every language, not just Israelites, all nations, all languages will serve him. Now the verb serve. Pilach in Aramaic, in Daniel, it always refers to the worship that must be given to God and no other God. But the Son of Man is given that same service that is not to be given to any other God in the book of Daniel. Now, how long does he reign? His dominion is everlasting dominion, rules forever, which shall not pass away. His kingdom, that will shall not be destroyed. Oh, look at that. Two mm -hmm. thrones. Look at that. One for the Ancient of Days and the other for the Son of Man. Look at that. And the Son of Man rules forever, just like the Ancient of Days, and he receives worship from all peoples and all languages forever. Yep. Now, here's where you're going to get the knockout, but you won't see it in English. Verse 18, you see the word, the Most High? Mm -hmm. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. God will fight for saints on earth. And give them the kingdom when he destroys their enemies. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right, watch here. Again, until the ancient of days came, he comes to fight for his saints on earth who are being persecuted. And judgment is given to the saints of the Most High. Remember this word, Most High, these words. It's one word in Aramaic. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Now here, it gets really interesting. Because here, Daniel uses two words for the Most High. He shall speak great words against the Most High. I'm going to show you that this word is singular. Eliah, Elaah. Singular in Aramaic. But then this other word, and shall, shall, shall wear out the saints of the Most High, it's a different. Mm -hmm. In Aramaic, it's two different words. You can't see it in English. Mm -hmm. And think to change times and laws. They shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Daniel 7, 27. This is key. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. These saints belong to the Most High. Okay, keep that in mind. Whose kingdom, the kingdom of the Most High, is an everlasting kingdom. And all the dominion shall serve and obey now, the word him is supplied. It's not an Aramaic. Mm -hmm. Literally, it says, all dominions shall serve and obey. 
You remember this word serve? Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Correct. The same word used in Daniel 7, 14 for the son of man. Oof. Did you catch that, Berto? Yeah. Same word here. And there was given him dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people's nations, languages should serve Sorry. him. Mm -hmm. Same word used in 27. Watch here. And all dominion shall serve and obey. Who? The Most High. But let me let, let you in on a little secret. Now I'm going to give you the... It, you don't even need to read Aramaic. That transliterates it for you. Watch the secret. Watch the secret. And I just did a session on this yesterday and today on Daniel. All right. Now I'm going to give you, get you the link and everyone else the link. Okay. Now here it is in private chat. Here's the private chat. Okay, John, and I'll get to you in a minute. I'll end it with you. Okay, for you in private chat, click on it so you can have this as a reference, you guys here. On Rumble, now watch here. Brother, when you click on it, I want you to take your cursor. You may not be able to see it on my screen. <clears throat> the Most High, El Yonim. You see the mm -hmm. E-I-N at the end? Mm -hmm. That's plural. It's a plural <clears throat> suffix. And here it tell you, adjective, masculine, plural. It's literally the highest ones, most high. Mm. It's plural. It's not singular. Mm. Yeah. It's highest ones, most highs, plural. And I'm going to show you why it's plural. We got it? Yeah. So if we follow the plural... These are the saints of the highest ones and the kingdom of the highest ones will endure and all kings will serve the highest ones. Oof. No, not lying. Now, but watch verse 25. There's two words. That shows you both the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man are the most highs. We know who the Son of Man is according to the New Testament that Jesus. Here it is for the rest of you guys. Again, save this. This is gold. That's why I was hoping they show up because we would bury and cremate their religion. Okay, now watch this, Berto. Two words for high, most high. Here it is. Ilaya, Ilaa. I'm trying to pronounce it. Ilaya, Ilaa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Notice it's singular. Adjective, masculine, singular, determinate. It's the most high, highest one, singular. That tells you Daniel can use the singular if he wants to. But mm -hmm. then now, here's where you're going to get confused. He uses it again, but it's plural. Elionin. There's the in again, the highest ones. Why does he use the singular here, the most high, and then switches to the plural, the highest ones? Because here it's talking about Antiochus opposing what? Posing one divine person, which I take in the context of Daniel to be the commander of the host of Yahweh, which would be Jesus. That's in Daniel 11, 25. But then he wants to emphasize the saints belong not just to the ancient of the day, son of man. They belong to both of them, the highest ones. Are you seeing it's plural? Mm -hmm. Everyone seeing it's plural in the chat? But then you're going to have to tell them, hey, buddy, over here it's singular, meaning Daniel could use the singular, adjective, masculine, singular, determinant. But here he switches to the plural, highest ones. Don't you think that's deliberate? It is deliberate because already in the context he showed you two, ancient days and son of man, and he's referring to them in the plural. These are the highest ones. Mm. You see why it's plural? Yeah. Did he not already show you in context two thrones? Ancient of days, son of man, seated on two thrones? Is that what he showed us? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, again, now watch here. Daniel 7, 22. What's the word for most high? There's that plural again. Elionin, in. And right here, adjective, masculine, plural. Let me get the link for everyone. That means bye-bye, Hebrew Israelites. Your blasphemy is destroyed by the Lord. And then we're going to wrap it up. So let me make my case. You guys can upload this. It's yours to your channels. Do what you want with it. It's yours. 
All right, so there it is, plural. Okay, now the one other time, verse 18. Notice the connection, though. It's always the saints of the highest ones, because Daniel yeah. shall show you the saints belong to the ancient days and the Son of Man equally. That's why he's using the plural. Daniel 7, 18. Again. Notice again, saints. Elionim. Highest ones. There it goes. Again. So notice when he wants to talk about the saints of the Most High, he uses the plural. These are the saints of the Most Highs. Highest ones. Because he wants us to know that believers belong to both the Ancient of Days and to the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. All right, now, what's the proof that the Elionim, plural, is referring to two, so it is plural, highest ones? Well, let me remind you again. Let's go back to Daniel 7, 9 to 10. How many did, does he see? How many do you see, Daniel? Let me remind you again. And then we're going to see who that son of man is. Let me remind you again. Daniel 7, 9 to 10. Pay attention. Thrones, golly gee, plural, ancient of days, sit, his throne, that's one. Well, that means there's another throne for who? Well, let's see. So ancient days sits on one throne, but he saw thrones. The throne is for who? The other one. There you go. <clears throat> so in the night visions, behold, one like the son of man. He came to the ancient days. Wow, that's two. Ancient of days, son of man. And they both are enthroned because the Son of Man's kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So he's a king with a kingdom, with a throne, but so is the Ancient of Days. So he mm. sees two thrones, two occupants, Ancient of Days one, Son of Man two, and they're both the highest ones. That's why it's plural. Mm. Okay, now, who is this Son of Man? It's not the Father. How do we know? Mark 14. 61, 62. Mark 14, 61, 62. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. You shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right of power, coming in the clouds of heaven. Bye-bye, Hebrew Israelites. Your religion has been decimated. Yeah, there's no Amen. way. Amen. Yep. I, so you I know yeah, I was, I was thinking of um, also Ephesians 1, 20 and 21, when it talks about, um, you know, he gave, well, let me pull it up real quick. I don't have so the... You want, so, Sim, you want me to go to the Greek version to see if it's treated as a singular, which means they're going to abandon the Hebrew, but then the Greek version, I will then use it in another way to decimate the arguments. Sim, stop speaking on their behalf. They're, they're stuck to the Hebrew and Aramaic. But if they want to go Greek, then I will then use the Septuagint against them. Psalm 112, verse 5, where it says, Who is like the Lord our God, who sits on Ein and Hypsilis? Same words used in Hebrews 1.3. They'll get buried no matter where they go. But go ahead, brother. Mm. Yeah, no, good point. So what, what are they saying? That the Septuagint is going to refute that? Yeah, because again, yeah, I, mean, I, I do not find it surprising they'll treat it as a singular because mm -hmm. the point being they don't want to give the impression that they're worshiping multiple gods yeah. so if they want to go to greek fine the son of man still reigns forever and all peoples all nations will give him the same worship that the most high receives you still can't get around it and point of fact if they want to go to the greek it will be even worse because that aramaic verb pilach it's rendered in some Greek manuscripts of Daniel 7.14 as la trevo. In mm -hmm. fact, when Justin Martyr quotes it against Trifo the Jew, in his Greek version, Daniel 7.14 says, Son of Man re receives la trevo. But according to Matthew 4.10, Luke 4.8, God alone receives la trevo yeah. and no creature. So I'll bury them either way. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, Revelation 3 and 21 says i'll give them to sit with me on my throne just as i sat with the father on his throne so there's oh, yeah. two i was going to ask about that yeah well, the thrones are there because uh, I, I was going to ask that because if you said the most high is the only one that sits or yeah because right most... there is he's not saying 
they're going to sit on a literal throne because I'll be a huge throne where millions will sit. <laughs> yeah, right. What he means is they will share in my authority. Yes. As I share in the authority of my father, but he shares it differently. How? Let me show you. Revelation 22, 1 of 5. See, they're going to get buried either way. Because remember what Daniel says? It's not just the Ancient of Days and the Most High who rule forever. It says, then that kingdom will be given to his saints on earth. Right? So the saints will rule and share in God's kingdom on earth. But who will rule over them? Ancient of Days and the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Revelation 22 says. Because we go to Revelation 22. Let's now read it. Watch here. In the new heaven and earth, when death is abolished, when death is abolished, how many thrones, how many occupants? Revelation 22, 1 of 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne, singular, of God and of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. One throne, but who sits on it? God and the Lamb. But there's someone else. And I'll show you that someone else in a minute. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manners of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse, but the throne, singular, of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. Do you see the difference? Jesus mm -hmm. is never depicted as serving the Father in the new heaven and earth. But he's depicted as joining the Father, as being served, even by glorified saints who reign in the new earth. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on in their foreheads. There shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Are you seeing it, Bruno? Mm -hmm. Though they reign forever and ever, God and the Lamb still reign over them. And they still serve God and the Lamb. Are you seeing it or no? Yep. I see it. I hear you. Yes, sir. Yeah, this guy's trying to manifest because he wants to make a big deal of the Greek. But now, Berto, do you see that even the saints that Daniel said would reign? Right yeah. here, here they are. They reign forever, but God and the Lamb reign over them, and they serve God and the Lamb. Correct. And mm -hmm. notice this throne belongs to God and the Lamb, not to them. Right. Meaning God and the Lamb have equal sovereign authority over them. Though they rule, they are still subject to God and the Lamb who rules over them. And God and Lamb will be served by them. Right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you a third participant. There's actually three on the one throne. Let me show it to you. You ready? There's actually three. Because I believe John, who wrote Revelation, also wrote the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Revelation 22.1. Pay attention to the metaphor. Just like Jesus is not a literal lamb, but he appears as a lamb to convey a spiritual truth. Likewise, let's see what this river of water of life really is. Revelation 22.1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Pay attention. Where did it come from? Proceeding out of the throne of God and Lamb. So notice, God and Lamb and the river water of life all are from the throne, right? Correct. This river water of life, it comes out of the throne without severing from it. So it means it originates from the throne. And yet God and them also occupy that throne. Well, what is this river water of life? John 7, 38, 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit. <sighs> Berto, what yeah. is the rivers of living water? The Holy Spirit. So when he sees the river of water of life, Proceeding from the throne, who is he seeing going forth from the throne? The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. But that means God and Christ, the Lamb, and the Spirit occupy the same throne. Mm. Wow. Amen. That's it. So if they have the same throne, that means they're equal in sovereignty. That means all three are the most high, the highest. <clears throat> well, I'm going to... I'm going to head out because I got a doctor's appointment early tomorrow. But I thank you, Sam, for uh, God bless you, bro.